This problem is a good example of projectile motion. In projectile motion problems, uh, we have something that's going up and coming back down. Um, and the equation usually looks like this. And I'm going to go ahead and explain what the parts are, and then we'll look at how it's uh, written in the problem. Uh, so usually what happens is um, we've got this... Um, negative 16 t squared and negative 16 just happens to be uh, related to uh, Earth's gravitational pull this number would be different on the moon or another planet but it'll always be for our projectile motion problems it'll always be negative 16 as long as we're dealing in feet um, per second and in this case we are definitely dealing in feet H, H of t, this is pronounced h of t, just like if you recall f of x. Um, f of x is simply y. h of t is a lot like y here. And, uh, and it just happens to be the height at a particular time. And the height is measured in feet. And if we know what the time is, we can then figure out what the height is. And again, if we know what the time is, we put the time in here and here and then calculate what the, the height will be at that time. All right, let's continue to look. The next thing you see in this equation is V sub zero or V naught. Um, it's it's uh, the initial vertical velocity. Um, we're only looking at time versus height, so we're only talking about going up and down. We're only talking about vertical motion at this point. Um, and so uh, the and then the little zero indicates at time zero so that's whatever velocity we have at time zero then uh, you've got t is time in seconds so h sub o is the initial height uh, just like V sub O, um, it's also pronounced H naught, and uh, the uh, little sub O, the little O here, it's a zero, um, means the height at time, time equals zero, <clears throat> and the height is measured in feet. Now let's see how that relates to our problem here. So um, up here, they, they, basically the word problem explains all these things to us. So I'm just repeating. Um, it tells us that uh, our uh, initial height is going to be the, the height of the 200 foot tower. And you'll notice that that's in the position uh, where H sub zero goes right here. And the problem goes on to say that the uh, velocity, the, it's fired at a velocity of 80 feet per second. That's the initial velocity. And you'll notice that the 80 shows up, uh, and that's V sub zero. Now, it turns out since we're firing it up into the air, it's positive 80. If we were firing it down to the ground, it would be negative 80. Um, <clears throat> and also notice that gravity has um, uh, a negative 16 here. Um, again, negative 16 is, is what we would have due to gravity here on Earth. Um, if we were on Jupiter or the Moon, we'd have a different number here. <clears throat> now, one part of projectile motion problems that's tricky for most students to get is this H of T part. Um, <clears throat> Inevitably, I find that students don't quite know what to do with that. Well, and it tells us what h of t is. It's the height of the object t seconds after firing. So, if, uh, if time equals zero, you've got to ask yourself the question, what is the height? And, and then, then there's other questions that we'll, we'll think about. But, but certainly, um, at time equals zero, what would you expect the height to be? In this particular problem, we know that height at time equals zero is going to be this amount right there. It's going to be 200. And that's due to the fact that we are firing from a 200-foot tower. One important strategy in solving any word problem is to draw a picture. 
And in this case, I think a picture could be really helpful. <clears throat> if we think of the height, well, first of all, let's think about um, w w uh, how how we might graph something like this. That's we're we're in algebra class for that reason. Um, down here, we could consider maybe we'd have time, and up here we could have height, and we could list that as h of t, and uh, and so there's our h axis. We'll also that's we also know that's our y axis. Here is our t-axis, but we'll, we also know that's our x-axis. And you'll notice <clears throat> that we could put a dot where t equals 0. And when we do, that dot is our, it's known as our y-intercept. It's our starting point for our word problem where time equals 0. And it's the initial height of our, of, of where we're at. And in this case, we're at the top of a tower. It's 200 feet. And then what happens? Um, the th an object is fired straight up, and then obviously it comes back down. So what's happening is is that the height is increasing, but time is ticking. And then slowly by slowly, that height has to come back down, but time continues to move on. So what's happening is is as we as as time as time goes on, we have different heights. Here's the time changing. And, uh, and slowly by slowly, we get the, this height increasing and then decreasing again. Now, the good news is, is because we know that this is a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and use something a little darker. There we go. Since we know that this is a quadratic equation, we expect to get a parabola. And <clears throat> we also know a little something about things going through the air. If you throw something in the air, you can see that it, there's kind of a parabola shape. Anyways, um, since since this equation is quadratic, there's a few things we know about this parabola. Um, parabolas only have one pointy part, and in this particular equation, in this particular equation that we have here, um, there's only going to be one pointy part on this parabola. There's not there's not eight pointy parts on a parabola. There's not even two. There's only one, and if this is what we believe the motion or the the relationship between time and height is going to look like and I believe it is um, then the pointy part has to be about here um, there's a line that we can find that, that tells us where that pointy part is um, and that line is known as the axis of symmetry the AOS and it's defined by an equation x equals negative b over 2 a. <clears throat> so, if you calculate what this line, if you calculate x here um, by looking at this equation, remember this is a, this is b, and this is c. And right now, all we need is a and b. Um, you can use that a and that b to find out wh after how many seconds you're going to get to this point. And if you can figure that out, you can then figure out how high that point is. So a quick calculation for the axis of symmetry shows us that if we have uh, negative 80, negative b over um, 2a, which is negative 16 times 2, a is negative 16, um, the negatives cancel out and we get um, the 2 and the 80 cancel, we get 40 over 16, that's uh, 20 over 8, that's 10 over 4, and that is 5 over 2. <clears throat> So, uh, essentially, x is about two and a half. Um, if you want to use decimals, you can. Two point five is fine. Um, and in this case, it's not really x. Don't forget, we're really working with t, and so our t equals two point five. That will be the t at the maximum point right here. And if we want to find that maximum point, we say, well, um, h uh, of two point five equals, and then we write out the equation, negative 16 times parentheses squared plus 80 times parentheses plus 200. And then we go ahead and we plug in this 2.5 into here and into here, and that'll give, give us our maximum height, um, 2.5, 2.5, and then we got to do some math. So if my math is correct, I calculate h of 2.5 um, seconds. 
to be equal to 300 feet. So if we look back at what this problem is asking, one, it's asking what, what's the domain and what's the range. And <clears throat> now we have a sense of maybe how to answer the question, what is the range of this function? Um, because we know that the function starts down here um, at uh, height equals zero. And we know the thing goes as high as height equals 300. So if we look at that, that, if we look at all the possible y values for this particular function, this, this guy here, this picture, um, we can say what the range is. The range must be, um, it's actually going to be, uh, uh, h is going to be greater than 0 and it's going to be less than 300 and technically we'll make these or equal twos and that'll give us our range of the this particular function so now let's consider our domain one thing that we've learned about parabolas is that in general if you're looking at a parabola, the domain of most parabolas is all real numbers. But that does not apply in a word problem like this. Our domain here is limited. Um, we've got, uh, if we look at all the possible input values for this function, and t is considered the input for this function, if we look at all of the, the possible values for t, um, well, t starts at 0 and it ends over here. So our domain is going to be limited. It's going to start here and it's going to end over here. So our domain goes between these two values. So let's take a look here. So domain is going to have t and t is going to be greater than or equal to something and less than or equal to something and already we know for sure it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. Time cannot be negative so our, our domain definitely has to have t greater than or equal to zero. Um, but what is t less than? We need to know this point here and we're going to take a look at a technique that we can use to figure out that point and uh, let's, let's see what we can do here. You might recall that um, this point here is known as an x-intercept. Uh, in this case, we could, we could call it a t-intercept, but it's kind of the same idea. Um, there will be more than one x-intercept in this problem, because if we look at this parabola, it actually does sort of go, um, it actually, we, we can imagine that the parabola actually kind of goes over here as into the negative territory as well as over here. So we'll get two solutions and one of them will be negative and we'll just have to throw out this negative solution. But we're looking for this point and we're looking for this point. And uh, one way to do that is just remember that this is, we can find both those points when h of t is equal to to 0. So we'll go ahead and set h of t to 0. So we get 0 is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 200. And then we'll reduce and simplify as best we can. Um, so this turns into uh, 0 equals negative 2 t squared plus 10t plus 25. Um, I just went through and divided each of these by 8. 8 was the greatest common factor and I factored that out. And you'll notice that we don't even see the 8 anymore because I divided both sides by 8 and 0 divided by 8 is just 0. So 0 equals all this. Now the only way to figure out what the t is here and here is to use the good old quadratic formula. You might recall x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What do we use the quadratic formula for? Well, we, we use the quadratic formula to get solutions. And solutions are also known as roots and zeros and x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and uh, use the quadratic formula to get an answer here. 
So if you do this math, um, this is a negative 2, by the way. Um, if you go and crunch these numbers using your calculator, if you use the proper technique, and you should try this and double check and see that you get the same answer as me, um, if you don't, come in and see me and let's figure out what went wrong. Um, <clears throat> the result should be approximately 6.83 seconds. Now, you will also get a negative answer. You need to throw that away because um, that negative answer doesn't relate to this problem. <clears throat> now, what we know is this. When we go to answer the question, what is the domain for this particular parabola, for this particular word problem, uh, it's going to be t is greater than or equal to 0 and t is less than or equal to 6.83 seconds. And the range was h is between 0 and 300 feet. Let me get that in there for you. So <clears throat> when the question is asked, what's the domain and range of this function? Well, th th this is how you figure it out. Figure out what the max or the min is, and uh, then figure out what the x-intercepts are. And if you do that, you can figure out the range and the domain for this problem. Now, before I leave this problem, I want to talk about the real-world implications of what we just did. What does range mean? What does domain mean? Why do we care? Um, what about these x-intercepts and this vertex? Why do we care? Well, in the real world, um, when we found the vertex, what we found was this was the max height. So that was actually a pretty useful thing to discover. We now know that if we fire an object and we know its initial velocity, we can figure out how high it's going to go. That's pretty cool. And, and the range, being from between 0 and 300 feet, tells us that <clears throat> the height we're interested in is between 0 and 300 feet. Um, another interesting question that could be asked is, um, at what time did the thing finally hit the ground? Well, again, we, we, can, we can look at this point here and we can say, well, uh, it must have hit the ground uh, at t equals 6.83 seconds. Hit the ground. So if we want to answer interesting questions like these, like uh, what is the maximum height and how long does it take till it hits the ground. Um, we can do that by figuring out the range and figuring out the domain.